Hi everyone, something a little different including a little bit of a different angle. I want to talk to you for a second about early electric clocks and the difference between a uh, self-starting clock and one that you have to manually start. Now we're talking about electric clocks, not the old mantle clocks where you have to turn the key to wind the spring to work the pendulum and also the gong. Electric clocks that were self-starting, you'd plug them in and away they would go. You didn't have to do anything. If the electricity went off, of course the clock would stop, but when the electricity came back on, the clock would, go back, would turn back on. That uh, specific motor was patented by Telecron in the, er the mid-20s. They held on to the patent, uh, and I think Westing, not Westinghouse, I think General Electric then got the license a few years later to produce clocks under the Telecron name. But other companies, such as Hammond, who produced this clock circa 1930-31, they didn't have that patent. Neither did Tesla. So they still had clocks that you had to spin to start. Now. If I've lost you, hang in there. <laughs> the reason why it's important is because if it's a, if it's a self-starting clock, anybody can plug it in. And if it runs, it runs. If it doesn't run, it doesn't run. And people say, oh, it's broken. This clock is not a self-starter. You've got to prime it, so to speak, to get it to run. But the antique dealer who was selling this didn't know that. And when they plugged it in, which I'm about to do, nothing happened. So when I was in the antique store, there was a price tag on this that said, $5, clock is broken, doesn't work. Well, I knew better. Now, it might have been broken, but I had a pretty good idea that it was not. And when I brought it home and plugged it in, it works perfectly fine, and I'm going to show you just exactly what I mean. Also, I have this identical clock upstairs. It was in my great-grandparents' house. Then it came to my grandparents and it was in my grandparents house when I was a kid growing up and I got it sometime when I was in college they actually gave it to me at that time so I've had it forever uh, and, and it's in, it's upstairs and I use it all the time so this one is going to be for sale but it's identical to the one that I have this is a Hammond clock it says to start now I don't know if you can hear me or not uh, to start push in turn left and let go push in turn left and let go that's what it says on the back of this clock it's very hard to see it now here's the funny part it says note current interruptions will stop clock restart and reset in the middle of the night if you're if you have wind no not if you have wind i mean not if you have gas but if there's a storm <laughs> and your electricity goes out for a second and then comes back on, this clock is going to stop and it's not going to come back on. These are cheaper to make. As I said, Westinghouse and Tesla didn't have the patent for quite a while, so yeah. Okay, here's the clock again from the back, and uh, I'll let you see exactly what I just read to you. Okay, start, push in, turn left, and let go. 
Current interruptions will stop this clock. And uh, this is the button right here, or the, the knob that I had to turn very gracefully and several times to actually get the motor to kick in. You can see it's pretty dirty and dusty, but uh, this clock will clean up very nicely. There are some scratches to the cabinet. It's a, it's a mahogany veneered cabinet. And some of this I'm going to be, I w first of all, I would never strip it to try to refinish it. I don't believe in stripping things. I'm going to do some scratch cover and some stain and clean it up and some beeswax. And it's going to show its age, but it will still be a really beautiful old clock that's going to run for many, many years. Oh, you're getting a sneak peek at the next thrift haul. You're not supposed to see that. Okay, so you didn't see that. Okay, enough suspense. Let's plug this thing in and see what happens. Here's the plug. Into the outlet it goes. And wow, nothing's happening. This clock is broken. I'm only going to sell it for $5. Shame on me. It's not broken. All right, so I reach back here and I grab this little wheel and I have to spin it. And I need to make sure I don't spin it. I need to spin it clockwise, okay, which I just did, and nothing happened, right? Watch, I'm gonna do it again. I let it go and nothing's happening. Oh no, let's try it again. And still nothing's happening. This clock is broken. No, 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 you're being too aggressive. Go in very gently. Just give it a little, let's try it again. There it goes, it caught, you see that? Look at it, it's spinning, it's running. Can you see that? This is a perfectly working clock. And the motor, you can't hear anything, nothing. Now, why is that black and white circle spinning like that? Well, you can very quickly look at this clock if you can't see the second hand, you can look and see it's running. But the second hand is running backwards because I spun it the wrong way. So we're going to unplug it. There's our wind storm. The clock has just stopped. I'm going to plug it back in. The clock is not going to start on its own. I've got to get in and spin it. And this time, let's spin it in the right direction. Come on. It's almost. Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. These can be temperamental. Remember, this clock dates. There it goes. Okay, it just caught. Now you'll see the second hand is moving clockwise, as it should. We have 20 minutes to 11. I guess I better get myself in bed. Um, and so we're working perfectly fine. So. That little bit of knowledge enabled me to buy a nice circa 1930 mantel clock, or you could use it anywhere in your home. It does not have a gong or a chime on it, so it's not going to wake you up. Um, in a nice wooden cabinet. And I only paid $5 for it. So now I'm going to uh, clean it up. I'm not going to strip it or refinish it. I'm just going to do some scratch cover on it to uh, get rid of some of these scratches, probably polish it with a lemon oil, and this is going to go up for sale. So I hope you learned a little something and had a good time looking at this antique clock. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Don't go away because I'm coming back with more. What time is it? Time flies. Well, it's update time, everybody. This is the next day. Uh, about 24 hours later, let me turn that light back off, and I want to show you that the clock has been running now. That's the accurate time. It's 6 p.m. Uh, currently here, the day after uh, I made the video of me starting this clock, and I've already done the restoration, and uh, I'll show you my tools of the trade here. Um, once I took the clock apart, using uh, a screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a larger set of pliers. Uh, I was then able to get the dust out of the mechanism with this tooth toothbrush. That'd be a big mouth. With this paintbrush, those are some of the tiny, tiny screws that hold the back plate on. 
uh, and then the little screw screwdrivers also to take it completely apart. Now you'll see how beautiful the case is. And let me turn this clock, let me turn this light off because I want you to be able to, I want you to see uh, that the metal work actually imitates tooled leather. And I don't, I guess it's not really, there's a better, well, that's not that good either. I'm showing it to you, that's a little bit better. I want you to see it in the natural light. And you can see it's still spinning away. And just look how beautiful the wood is. I cleaned the glass um, with good old Windex and some paper towels. First got all of the nicotine. You know, if you have something from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's going to be covered in nicotine because everybody smoked. So got all the old nicotine off. Now the beautiful cabinet has been cleaned and polished. And let me get some more light on the subject here. That's a little bit better. And I particularly enjoy using Howard's uh, products. I've used them for years and they're wonderful. So um, some scratch cover. And yes, it's going to show its age. There's no way I would strip this because you would never be able to get the beautiful sort of cracking in the alligator hide finish there uh, if you were to strip it. I know people have different tastes. I don't like antiques to look new, and so I prefer the um, old finish and just clean it up and do some wax, and it really looks beautiful. Um, you can see I left the back off for a minute because I wanted to show you the inside here it was filthy and I've cleaned it. It's interesting that the inside base of the clock is oak, and what you may or may not be able to see, they even veneered the inside uh, with bird's eye maple. And I don't think this is showing up, but trust me, this is uh, bird's eye maple on the inside. And that's what they use to veneer the inside of the clock. Just amazing. So uh, I still have to screw the very back plate on, which is back there. I wanna turn this around again and uh, give you a good look. I know there's quite a glare there. That's the cat out, out in the other room, and he is having a conversation with his toy mouse. So he's fine if you hear that strange noise. He's just playing. Let's see if you can hear uh, a bit of the motor, which is just humming very quietly. Get all the way in there. I don't know if you can hear anything or not. By the way, this is called a cathedral clock. And the cathedral design wasn't popular for very, very long. Of course, we know about the cathedral radios and whatnot. They came on the scene around 1930. Tambor style clocks um, had a much longer popularity, run in popularity than the cathedrals did. The tambour clocks were made, gosh, well into the 60s, and it was a form that, that was popular for decades. But the cathedral clocks, really from the mid-20s to the mid-30s, and then that style just died away. Okay, there it is, the old Hammond clock doing its thing, and it will be up for sale very soon in the old Curiosity Shop. That's the clock update. Thanks for watching, everyone.